Hi, everyone, and welcome to Tech Talk, a show focused on Adver's networking innovation. I'm Gareth Spence, and I'm joined by Paul Morkel to talk about an exciting new demo. Paul, thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can see here behind us? Yeah, so what we're showing today, actually for the first time, is an example of our filterless optical network. It's a new configuration of the FSP3000, which is intended for coherent access networks in particular. Um, using passive splitters and combiners with coherent optics, as opposed to what might have been done in the past using fixed filters for building the same type of network topologies. You mentioned filterless optical networks there, and that's a term that I'm not overly familiar with. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, it's descriptive, right? It's a network which is built a multi-point network, so it may be a tree or a linear architecture that's built without the more traditional mux d -mux filters. Um, you know, 40 channel, 48 channel, 96 channel, mux d -mux filters. Here we build that same type of topology, but now with passive splitters and combiners, which enables us to aggregate multiple coherent wavelengths um, without the use of uh, you know, larger mux d -mux filters, but with a very compact, uh, low-cost passive splitter technology. And what innovations has Adver brought here that enables these coherent access configurations? Yeah. So the main thing is that we uh, have a level of integration um, between our very small form factor passive splitter devices um, that go into one of our one-rack unit shells, along with um, the uh, high-performance, low-noise amplifiers that are used on this type of system. So it's the combination of those two that provides this low-cost, very small form factor coherent access node. And what software is involved here? So that's a large part of the solution. You're quite right, Gareth, is that we have Ensemble Controller, which is our network management software, is used to very specifically control the wavelengths that are used on the system. Now, with a passive architecture, it's completely colorless. Uh, it's completely gridless, um, and you need to make sure that there's no possibility for overlapping wavelengths on the system, and that's all controlled via our Ensemble Controller software. Okay, and given the level of innovation here, will filterless access configurations uh, be the norm going forward? Will they overtake uh, OLS with FODEMs or RODEMs? So we think that there's a very specific use case where this type of technology fits very well in the network, in particular in coherent access networks where in the past um, a rotom you know, might have been an option to use, but it's too large and too expensive for that part of the network. So this really fulfills that application in access. It's really most suited to tree-type topologies, star topologies, as well as linear topologies. It's not the ideal solution for ring-based topologies or for mesh-based topologies. Um, so it really fits into a different part of the network. It really coexists alongside the other technologies, but allows us to extend coherent optics deeper into the, into the access network than we would have done in the past. Paul, thanks for the introduction. What we're gonna do now is switch to Ensemble Controller to see the demo in action. Here we are with the Ensemble Controller network topology screen, which shows the uh, filterless optical network that we're demonstrating today. It's a combination of nodes. It includes a head-end node and a, a number of access nodes, AN1, AN2, AN3, AN4 and AN5. What we have already is a number of services that are running on this network. Uh, we have a 100 gig MUX bonder service. We have a 100 gig Ethernet aggregation service. And you can see on the right hand side, uh, those services are up and running in the services view. And what we're going to do is add a new service from AN3 to the head end, which is based on the use of a 100 gig transponder. And so as we walk through this, you can see what we do. We create a new service as a 100 gig E service, um, at the, starting off with the head end node. Um, we're gonna call the service name 100 gig transponder. Uh, so that will appear you know, eventually in the services view with the other services. Um, we then pick um, the uh, name as the workshop. That's what we're doing today. And we click on next, we move forward. And uh, what you see again here is the network topology view. What we can do is click the source node as the head end. We click the destination node as the terminating point. Each of those already have the 100 gig transponder uh, equipped uh, in the uh, shelves. What we do is we select the, uh, uh, the uh, slot and the, the, the card in the head end node. We select the slot and the card in the access node. And then we move forward and create the service. Now there's a number of defaults which are set in terms of the line side modulation. It's an OTU4 
network interface which is created to support this 100 gig service. And we just defaulted to the uh, forward error correction, for example, that's uh, the default on the system. Uh, with that, we then go ahead and the system automatically creates uh, the service from the head end to AN3, transiting through these passive nodes at AN1 and AN2, which are already carrying traffic from the endpoints at AN4 and AN5. So here we see now that the 100 gig transponder service has been set up from uh, the head end to AN1. You can see that there were um, a couple of flags which are on those nodes which have been cleared automatically. And you can see in the service mix on the right hand side, the 100 gig transponder service now coexists with the 100 gig muxponder service and the 100 gig aggregation service. So that's the demonstration that we've done then of setting up a new service with a 100 gig transponder across the filterless optical network. Um, via multiple nodes on the system that's already carrying traffic um, you know, across, the, across those links. Um, what the system has done, it's done the automatic service creation and has done automatic wavelength assignment as well to make sure that the wavelengths are compatible with other services that are running on the system. Paul, that's great. Thank you for walking us through the demo today.